In this video, you will learn how to install an Armstrong suspended ceiling system. Pre-planning and watching this video will help your installation go smoothly. Safety There are a few safety tips you should keep in mind before beginning your project. Metal grid components can be sharp. Gloves and safety glasses are recommended. Make sure you have a stable ladder and that your work area is clear of obstructions. Tools Please pause the video here to review the list of tools that may be needed for your installation. Site Preparation Before beginning your installation, you'll need to identify the direction of the joists. Main beams typically run perpendicular to joists. If you have existing drywall, here's how to identify joist direction. Locate hidden joists using a stud finder or by tapping on the ceiling until you hear a solid thud. Mark this location. Repeat to locate remaining joists. Mark joist locations with chalk lines. Planning your layout. We recommend creating a layout of your ceiling before beginning your project. Visit the drop ceiling calculator on our website for additional guidance. For the best appearance, border panels should be the same size on opposite sides of the room and as large as possible. Use your room dimension and the following formulas to plan your space. Pause the video here to review the worksheets. Hanging Point Layout Now that you have your tile layout planned, you'll need to lay out and mark your hanging points. These hanging points will support your main beams. The first row of main beams in a 2 foot by 4 foot panel installation should be hung the width of the border panel size away from the wall. In a 2 foot by 2 foot panel installation, the first row of main beams can be hung the width of the border panel or a border panel width plus 24 inches from the wall. Please refer to your ceiling layout for these dimensions. Remember, hanger locations should not be spaced more than 4 feet apart in any direction. Installing Wall Molding The first step to installing your grid is establishing your ceiling height. For a typical installation, leave at least 3 inches below joists. This will allow you to get the ceiling panels in and out of the grid more easily. Identify your desired ceiling height. Then, add the height of the wall molding above the desired ceiling height. Mark a level line where the top of the wall molding will be on three walls. This will keep the marks from being visible after your ceiling is installed. Use a string line to mark the fourth wall. Doing this correctly will help ensure that your ceiling plane is level and flat. Tip: The easiest way to establish a level ceiling plane is with a laser level. Fasten the wall molding to the wall studs every 16 inches to 24 inches on center with the appropriate fastener for your type of stud or wall. If attaching the molding directly to the wall isn't possible, hang a section of main beam next to the wall as a substitute for regular wall molding. It will look the same when the job is complete. Wall molding corners can be created in two different ways. Butt joists are acceptable at inside corners. Outside corners should have a mitered joint. Installing Hanging Hardware Let's install the hanging hardware. There are multiple choices. Hanger Wire the traditional way to hang a ceiling is with hanger wire and fasteners. Identify the locations of your first main beam and snap a chalk line. Additional main beams will be spaced 4 feet apart. Screw the wire fasteners into the joists along that chalk line, a maximum of 4 feet apart. Next, cut the hanger wire so that the length is the distance from your fastener to the top of the molding, plus 1 foot. Pre-bend the hanger wire 6 inches from the end, thread the bent end through the fastener, and wrap it around itself 3 times. The wire is now securely attached. Do this step for all remaining hanger locations. Measure 7 eighths of an inch from the bottom of the molding and in line with the hanging hardware. Drive a nail into the wall just above the molding. Do the same on the other side of the room. Stretch a leveling string from nail to nail along the row of wires. Swing hanger wires over to the string line and bend each one at a 90 degree angle where they touch the string. Doing this consistently and accurately will help create a level ceiling. Stretch additional leveling string lines to pre-bend other hanger wires. Remove leveling strings after bending the wires. Quick hang hooks and brackets. 
there are a few things to keep in mind when using the QuickHang hardware. This hardware is designed to be a faster and easier way to install and level a ceiling versus traditional hanger wire. This hardware is for residential use only and is designed for use with solid wood or engineered wood joists. Two hook options allow for ceiling drops from 2.5 inches to 6 inches and 2.5 inches to 12 inches below the bottom of the joists. The hardware is not for use on finished drywall ceilings. Plan your layout in the same manner you would using hanger wire. The quick hang hardware should be spaced 4 feet apart. Make 1 inch long vertical marks on the side of each joist where the bracket will be located. Use the center hole on the bracket for alignment with the vertical mark. Hammer in the two tabs for a temporary hold. Nail the bracket to the joist through the two openings above the hammer tabs using the provided nails. You can also attach the bracket to the joist using a single number 5 wood screw through the center alignment hole. With the brackets securely attached to the joist, insert the grid hook using the diamond-shaped holes in the brackets. Thread the small end of the hook from the back through the lower hole. Push the hook up and rotate to thread through the upper hole, squeezing the spring tabs to allow the wire to go through. Do not cut quick hang hooks. If the hook needs to be shortened due to an obstruction, the top portion can be bent by hand or with pliers. Turn all hooks in the same direction, parallel to the joists. Set the hooks at about the same height. The bottom of the hooks should align with the top of the wall molding. To adjust the height of the hook, squeeze upper and lower spring tabs while lifting or lowering the hook. You will do final leveling once all of the grid is installed. Preparing and hanging main beams. You will need to trim the end of the first main beam so that a cross T slot is a border panel distance from the wall. This first main beam should be closest to the wall. Cut the top of the grid first with tin snips, then bend the grid open and cut the face. Place the cut end of the main beam on the wall molding and using the round hole in the grid, hang the main beam on the hanger wire or quick hang hook. For installations using hanger wire, you will need to bend the wire up and wrap it around itself three times. If the holes don't line up, re-bend the hanger wire to align with the nearest hole. Check to make sure your grid is level after rebending the wire. Do this same step for the next main beam, running parallel 4 feet away. Preparing and cutting border cross tees. Stretch a string line from one end of the room to the other, below the wall molding and along the edge of the main beam, furthest from the wall of the first main beam. Your first border tee will be positioned a border panel's distance away from the wall. If your main beam is cut correctly, there should be a rectangular slot at this location. To cut the first border tee, hold the end of the cross tee against the wall and then mark and cut the cross tee where it intersects the string line. Insert the uncut end of the cross tee into the main beam through the rectangular hole and rest the cut end of the tee on the wall molding. Repeat these steps for the second border cross tee. You can temporarily fasten the cross tees to the wall molding with a clamp to keep them steady while you square the grid. Squaring the grid. To achieve the best results, it is important to make sure your grid is square at this point in the installation. This will allow you to adjust if changes are required. Before checking for squareness, you should first install two four foot cross tees between the two main beams in line with the first two border tees. When connecting two cross tees in the same rectangular hole in a main beam, insert the second tee into the slot by passing on the right side of the already installed cross tee. Installing a cross tee is easier if the tee is inserted into the rectangular slot at a downward angle from above the grid plane. Listen for an audible click to ensure a good connection. To check that your grid is square, measure across the diagonal of the 2 foot by 4 foot opening. The measurement will be the same if the grid is square. If the measurements aren't the same, trim one of the main beams until the diagonals are equal. Installing remaining grid. Once your grid is square, complete the first two rows of main beams by hanging additional main beams from the hanger wires or hooks and joining their ends together. Listen for an audible click to ensure a good connection. At the far end of each of these two rows, you'll need to cut both main beams so they rest on the wall molding. Now install all remaining main beams. Use the leftover ends of the cut main beams to start additional rows of main beams. 
You will need to trim all starting main beams so a cross tee slot aligns with your already installed cross tees. Installing a second guide string perpendicular to your first guide string and in line with your first row of cross tees will help identify where you need to cut all remaining main beams. Cut and install all remaining border cross tees. Remove the clamps. To lock your grid in place and maintain squareness, we recommend attaching a few cross tees to the wall molding with either screws or pop rivets. Now install the rest of the cross tees, starting with the 4-foot cross tees running perpendicular to the main beams. Install these cross tees 2 feet apart to create a 2-foot by 4-foot opening. If you are doing a 2-foot by 2-foot ceiling installation, install 2-foot cross tees at the midpoint of the 4-foot cross tees. Final Leveling If using hanger wire, your grid should be level at this time. Check by using a magnetic level. Unbend and retie wires if adjustments are required. If you are using quick hang hardware, start with your first installed main beam in the corner of the room with a magnetic level and adjust as needed. Continue working your way across the room by squeezing the adjustable tabs and raising or lowering the hooks until your system is level. Installing ceiling panels. Wear clean gloves or wash your hands before you handle the ceiling panels to prevent dirt smudges on the tiles. Lift the panel at an angle up through the grid. Gently drop into place. Remember, mineral fiber panels can be delicate and should be handled with care. Avoid dragging the face or edges of the panels against the grid. Start with border panels and work towards the center of the room. If a tile cannot be installed in this manner, an adjacent cross tee can be removed to allow the tile to be positioned. The cross tee should then be reinstalled. If there's an obstruction in the area where you are inserting a ceiling tile, you may need to lift the ceiling tile through an adjacent opening and gently move it across the back of the grid into place. Cutting Border Tiles Border tiles will likely need to be trimmed. Use a straight edge and cut the panels face up. For tegular edge tiles, you will need to cut the edge that's resting on the wall molding to allow it to lay flat. Cutting Tegular Edge Tiles First, trim tegular edge border panels to the same dimensions as for flat panels. The tegular edge must now be cut into the panel. Set the panel into the grid face side down. Draw a light pencil line on the panel using the wall molding as a guide. Remove the panel. Use a sharp utility knife and straight edge to cut halfway through the panel from the face side along the pencil line. Lay the utility knife on its side next to the panel and, with the panel face up, cut into the panel at the tegular edge height to the depth of the first cut. Discard the cut material. If the cut edge of the panel is still visible when installed, paint with a flat white latex paint and install. For a complete set of installation instructions, visit our website at ceilings.com. Before you go, don't forget to hit the like button if you learned something new about ceilings. Got comments and questions? Add them below and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more.